This episode is sponsored by City Traders Imperium. CTI is a prop trading firm looking for profitable Forex traders who need more capital. CTI will back its traders up to $2 million, which is the most in the industry, and thousands of traders worldwide are trading their capital remotely from their own home. It's the most flexible funding provider in the industry, where any strategy is welcome, and overnight or weekend positions are allowed. Plus, CTI doubles your account every time you hit 10% net gain, which you can scale up to $2 million. Click the link in the description to find out why City Trader offer the best funded trader program in the industry, or visit citytradersimperium.com. All right, folks, here we are on Trading Up. We've got Andre Stewart back on the show, and he's going to give us a, a really, really thorough introduction to Volume Profile. So, guys, if you've ever wondered how to trade with Volume Profile, this is the video to watch. So, Andre, welcome back to the show. It's been a while. How are you? I'm great, Cam. Just in, enjoying life, man. How are you? Yeah, yeah, I'm good as well, mate. I'm good. So, look, um, I'm going to hand that over to you. Let's just get into it, and, uh, and you're going to walk through volume profile for everyone yeah simple enough now the reason i wanted to do this too is um i'm seeing so much bs and in in the trading education space as far as <clears throat> excuse me strategy goes this that and quote-unquote manipulation and i'm i just kind of like my head is throbbing because people eat this crap up and then they come and they ask me for help and i get it I was that same guy looking for help before too, but at the same time, I I, I want to show you show. I want to show the trading community a different a different way of trading, um, and as as well as be a little bit more transparent than I have been. Now I don't mind sharing a lot with volume profile anymore because it's not something I use anymore, um, but it's it's it could be a very very useful tool. But just like like every other tool, it has its drawbacks, right? Um, there's two types of volume. There's the session-based volume, which is giving you uh, daily. You can do it by daily. You can do it by, um, it gives you a profile of the volume uh, for a, a day, a session, a uh, week, year, doesn't matter. I'm going to focus more in on um, the short-term aspect of it. And this is actually going to probably be a lot of, uh, it's going to be a little more, unconventional as far as what your typical volume profile trader says because even with the vp i find and i'm not talking about the guest but volume profile that i've seen comments well oh he trades it wrong well i i was massacring gold with volume profile so i don't think what i'm doing is wrong a little bit of ego so Anyway, so let's get started. There's some basics um, with with profile that you should know. The points in which uh, stick out are called high volume nodes. They they literally stick out like a like a sore thumb. The points in which they drop off, they are called uh, a low volume node, or you often hear them referred to as a ledge. Now. Can I ask a question? Line. Can I ask a of quick course. question? What's the uh, what's the indicator you've got on there on your trading view? So, so guys... this is just the trading view. If you go into indicators and you hit volume profile, you uh, session volume. Okay. That's all. That's all this is. Um. So this red line here, this is called the point of control or VPOC. You'll hear it referred to as that as well. And what that is, that's uh, the highest volume price for that particular session. So with this one, this is um. A daily profile and you can see it's starting to build excuse me it's starting to build a profile for today because we're literally right doing this right on rollover um i lost my train of thought but anywho so high volume node we have low volume nodes or ledges and we have the vpoc and you'll see here uh these high volume nodes is, are kind of where uh, volume just this just, just where the bars stick out like a sore thumb so point number one you need to know and understand the trend and if you don't understand the trend just look at a monthly chart right look at a weekly chart right we're going up but we're heading into highs so this could be a, this is where trading can get a little tricky because now you're at a point where psychologically sellers are going to be connected and you're also look down here at these lows you're at a point where where, where buyers are psychologically connected as well so expect some choppiness and it's just because believe it or not the market's fair buyers get a chance to buy low sellers get a chance to sell high it's a zero-sum game that's 
the point of it. Now, let's get back to volume profile. So, what I look for, and again, this goes against all common knowledge are two things. I look, people say you should trade away from volume. So you should trade in areas where there's low volume um, and trade it back into volume. I, I kind of beg to differ on that one. Why? Why would you trade in an area of no volume? That's where volatility gets dicey. So case in point, right here. If I were to take a short right here at the low volume node or the ledge from the 17th of August. So is that Monday? I don't even know. My days just kind of blend together now, Cam. Uh, yeah, it looks so like the 17th. Looks... If I were to take a short up here and anticipate it coming back down into here, which is this volume point of control here from the 17th, I'm dealing with some drawdown, right? This is why I don't believe that I could I, I should just fade low volume nodes. It is a fact that price is attracted to volume, but how it gets there is a different story. Now I'll, I'll leave the listeners to figure that out on their own. So myth number one, you should always trade uh, from low value to high value. That's 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 assuming you can predict exactly where a market high and exactly where a market low is going to come in at. And let's face it, most of us can't. Not even. Here's a fun fact for you. Did you know that most in, most banks laid off all their forex traders? They weren't making any money. They weren't profitable. Now, it just goes to show that it, banks aren't manipulating price. They are just as clueless as a lot of you guys are, and there are very few of them that can actually freaking do this. So. They laid them off because they were hemorrhaging money, but they, and this, you can, I think this may be something you can look up. They were pretty much banks were hemorrhaging money from spot, spot forex trading. So the banks just do what's profitable for them and deal. They make millions on commission dealing to people who are trading in the billions. That's more of a profitable business model for them. So we can put that the stupid manipul manipulation crap because it just doesn't, it's not a it's not that big of a factor and the other thing is retail only makes up about six and a half to seven percent of total market space i mean do we really matter at seven percent probably not all right ran over so i think that trading uh trading low value to high value is 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 silly because the market's going to stop until it finds stability it's not going to it's not going to stabilize typically in areas of low volume that's where volatility can and can spike one way or the other because the price is just searching for liquidity and and, and it won't stop until it finds it so what do i what what, what do i personally think i don't want to sound like a douchebag but i was short the pound today and i had been long for the pound for a couple of weeks well i was short the pound because it hit the target and if I were trading exclusively in volume profile, what would I have done? Simple. Let me remove. Yes, can I ask one question? Uh, Please do. Why, why are some of those nodes sort of grayed out a little bit and others aren't? Grayed out where? Like they look a little bit lighter than, like those ones down there look lighter than the ones at the top. You know, that's probably a trading view thing. I have no okay. idea. Right. So what would I have done? I personally like, to trade at high volume price because typically breakout in a retest of a high volume node is going to provide you with a nice push. But that push is very dependent upon the current market direction, right? Do I think the bull trends over? Not really because the dollar still seems kind of weak, but that doesn't mean that you can't take short term trades against it. So. So let's in, let's let's play inspector here, and I am going to draw some lines at these high volume nodes, and we're going to drop a time frame. We're going to go to the thirty minute. You see, now okay, another point: the v, volume profile is dynamic until that day is over. So the high volume nodes, the low volume nodes, 
there's also some some things that aren't shown on here. Let me see if I can correct that. There's the value, value area high and the value area low, but it does not seem to show on here. Developing value area up. Show values. Oh, no, no. Show values. What about the shadow? Yeah, does no, that do it? That just that just gives you a bunch of useless no. information. Oh well. Okay. Yeah. So, but typically speaking, you can also take a break and retest of a value area high and a value area low. And all that means is the value area high is kind of like the second highest volume price of the day. The value area low is the lowest price, which did a lot of volume. Hope that makes sense. So I look for breakout and retest of high volume nodes. And I look to trade it not to low value, but back into a high volume price point. Why? If there's high volume at a specific price point, logically speaking, why would I want to not trade there, right? And again, don't get me wrong. You can take some excellent trades off of points in, in, in volume where the volume tapers off. So let's say like right in here, I'll just draw a zone out of here. But you can also see it may, maybe it did taper off, but there was a volume push through there, which indicates that there's some type of liquidity there. So. Let's be logical here. Let's take this high volume node from the previous day and we want it to flip. Break out. Flip, what do you mean by flip. flood? Should, flood is in like flip, you just yeah. So I should say flip, break okay. out retest. That's what you wanted to see. You want to see these high volume areas from the previous day. Uh, if you're trading against the trend, you want to see them break out and flip. If you're trading with the trend, you want to do the same thing. You want to buy low, sell high. So I like to see these high volume prices essentially flip because that tells me, and here I have two, just mark a, just nothing's precise, just mark a freaking zone out of them. Let's drop down the time frame and see if we get some hits there. Not on the 15 and not on, probably not on the five. Nope, not on the five either. That's fine, that happens. So let's go back to the 30 minute chart. I know that potentially the high volume price from yesterday is a target. Now, if I took a buy in here, you know, that probably would have worked out, but it's too, it's, 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 we're too close to the day to even try to pick a direction for the day, even though the trend is still consistently saying it's up in dollar weakness. So let's say you're writing the trend. Let's remove all drawings. Essentially, you're going to want to see these high volume prices flip. So the crosshairs, I'm just going to point at all the high volume nodes. So here, cool. The market comes back there. You get a very tight entry to the pip. We want to see these high volume nodes flip. Boom, boom, boom. But you also do have to, have, have to take into account, let's go to a monthly chart. So I don't use trading view that much. So you also have to take into account high prices and low prices because that's, that's important. There. There. Because it's just like, it's, it's very similar to volume profile because you, you, you want to see your high prices essentially give you some low prices. Yeah, that's it. I don't feel like marking out more. Yeah, make makes sense, yeah, doesn't it? It's like yeah, the high and the low prices, just the highs yeah, and the lows of the month, right? and, and it'll be okay. So case in point right here. This is where volume profile fails because volume profile tells you that the market should remain in a range, and it does. It, it ranges eighty percent of the time, but that range, it also ranges eighty percent of the time on a daily chart. It ranges eighty percent of the time on a uh, weekly chart. It ranges eighty percent of the time on a monthly chart on a four right it's fractal so you can break that down it's per each and every single time frame so the volume profile to me session based volume doesn't work well in the trending environment because at that point you have no clue as to essentially what the market's reaching for so let's analyze this high and low so we know this is a monthly high 
and we had a really nice breakout. Let me zoom in on here. Okay. So your recommendation is that if you're in a trending market, volume profile is going to be a lot Correct. more difficult to, to use. Correct. And right. th it's kind of part of the reason why I don't trade with it anymore. I, I'm fully price-based these days. Um, but again, it's a good tool because if you're expecting a breakout, so let's look here. When we, when, we, when we broke the monthly high, we had a really nice retest right here. Now, it's going to take some cojones for a trader to buy a breakout and retest of a high. Right, because too many times traders have been, uh, let's say, caught up in a market that had no willingness to push past the high and then would come come a bit lower, and then the trend continues. So again, it takes some very big cojones to to buy a breakout. But look at look at your hints. The market leaves you hints everywhere. High volume node right here broke above. High volume node right here broke above. Those are your hints that the trend may potentially continue, um, and these end up being some of the best prices to get it, to get it. And I, I wouldn't say here; I'd say more here. But those end up being the best places to get into. So then again, don't chase the move up. Buy pullbacks. Like be logical. Buy pullbacks because here's an area of intense volume. The market pulls back into there, but according to volume profile, even right here, this is a low volume node, but you're not going to know that at the time because price is ticking and these are being dynamic as the market's moving. You're not going to know that, but what I'm trying to get, get, get at is you'll have higher probability trading. You want to look for a, a weak drink. What do I mean by a weak move? A weak move is typically a move against the underlying trend and at the end of the day it's 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 all speculation nobody knows if that's going to be the spot that stops the market so at that point what you have to do as the trader is you have to find confluence it doesn't matter what it is i'm anti-trend line they just don't work to me but if you see trend lines use a trend line trend line breaks use a trend line break um what supply and demand patterns if you see that in there, use that. Use confluence because there's no right or wrong answer. There's no right or wrong way to essentially make this work. What you're looking to do, what you're looking to do as a trader is just ride the wave. You don't need to call tops and bottoms. I know I know very few traders that can. I'm not one of them that tries to play trading guide and call tops and bottoms. Why? That's the death of your trading account, right? Any trader who sold a high or bought a low expecting that to be the exact point will tell you it only works about 20% of the time. So I'm not saying call the highs, call the lows. Look for, look, look for the signs that the market is looking to expand into new territory. But look at the strategic points that the market uses. You can back those by high volume to essentially follow price. So let's look here. So again, the rule of thumb, most volume profile traders, you want, you want, you want to trade away, you want to trade low volume and the high volume. Okay, but it doesn't come back all the way there. Why? Trends intensify. They don't weaken, they tend to intensify until the market reaches this target. So like right here, we can make the argument now out of all the out of all the cases that we've seen that this area where volume dropped off was really really good but what i'll tell you is the market's reaching in here it's reaching for here and again nothing's precise and this is great in hindsight but if you simply said okay i'm going to follow the trend I'll put my stop somewhere beneath the, the day's low, like a, or a, a, or a cluster of volume. Stop beneath a low or a high, depending on the trend, or put your stop beneath a cluster of volume, a string. You give the market the breathing room that it needs because the price is going to run until what whatever supply and demand imbalance is, is, is satisfied. And no, I'm not talking about rally-based rallies, drop-based drops, and all that other crap. I'm talking about order flow, whatever supply and demand is satisfied, price is going to move until that is, is done. So buy here, 
essentially, right? You buy strength, you sell strength if you're going short and you ride the wave, right? So let's look in here. Price is attracted to volume. Right? And yeah, this is a couple days old, but there's strength here, right? And yeah, the 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 classic VP traders are gonna say, oh, low volume. They probably bought here, got stopped out, because again, they the the classic teachings of volume profile just to me, they don't cut it. And if you just say, hey. I have a window of entry. I don't know precisely where the market's going to go. I have a window of entry into this area of high volume. And if you're trading the range, just trade it up into attempt to trade it up into the previous some some strength, right? But again, you want to see that area of strength flip right here. And again, it's hard to tell with precision where the market will stop, but we break out, we feed back into a zone of strength. And the trend continues, right? Now, I treat it like I treat support and resistance. I don't believe in it. <laughs> so the more the more time a level is hit, it's not stronger. It's weaker because, again, let's think logically here. Cam, if I came over your house with a hammer and I start hitting at your wall, what's going to happen to your wall? Yeah, I eventually get a hole in it. Yeah, that's the same thing with, with support and resistance. It's no different it's not strength it's the more it hits on a level is a is a sign of weakness but again people i'm not trying to sound like i'm the holiest trader in the whole wide world because god knows i'm not what i'm saying is think logically about things right like super duper super duper logical and and and, and use logic to your advantage right because look here one hit two hit three hit four hit you come back down into that area you look through it, right? That's your clue, yeah. <laughs> right? To maybe not trade that anymore because that is that that that's weakness. And here's here here's a point in time where yeah, it's right. But I would argue the market is reaching for strength, and price is running until it runs out of steam, and boom. But again, confluence, right? So let's let's focus on this leg right here, confluence. It's the word of the day, my friends, confluence. Let's take this trend line for in, for instance. I hate trend lines so much. I like trend line breaks more than I more than I like trend lines. Trend line breaks to me are more reliable. These little bitty range plays. If you didn't catch the short here, you look at a break in quote unquote in you know, I don't even believe in market structure because that's all northern null and void until if if liquidity flips, right? So break out, retest, short, right? And it runs down into here, into this area of weakness. <clears throat> now we get strength, trend continues. But guess what? Now we're ranging. And you got options. You can buy the bottom of the range. You can buy, you can sell the top of the range, right? And in this instance, they work out. But like I said before, trends will intensify. And then the market breaks out. Um, and then the pound just hit a target that I had of right here today. So I, I just took some freaking shorts, but I still think that, uh, this could be bullish until, until otherwise noted, but at the same, in the same instance, look, use whatever tools you have. Trendline breaks, All right? We have one here. There's no telling if this will even hold, um, because we could see a day of price movement against against the underlying trend but then where are we at in terms of the higher time frame charts i'm down i'm getting down here to lows right so there is a very real chance and it's just weekly lows but there's a very real chance that the market is going to push up and let's we don't have a real distinct high right here there's a high price a high right here too the market just couldn't hang at these highs but why? It's more expensive for a buyer to buy a high than it is for a buyer to let the market pull back, maybe down into some weekly lows, right? What's more, what's more cost efficient? Buying at lower prices, right? And I think that's where a, a volume profile has its weaknesses because 
I can tell you the weaknesses in my own personal strategy right now, just like I can point out the weaknesses in volume profile. You should know where your strategy is great, but you also should know where your strategy is not so great. And again, you can use different forms of volume profile like uh, fixed range, which it typically should give you, let's clear everything off here. I didn't do it on the weekly. No, it's not fixed range. Or it gives you the profile to the side to give you an idea of targets, visible range. Maybe it's that one. Yes, visible range. So then I'll, I can get rid of one of these. All right, it'll give you more of an idea of what the market is seeking. And you can see here too, I'll use this, the crosshairs. When we pull back into an area of strength, that's where the market's at its best. So we're resting on some strength right here. There's a weakness in the sellers up here. I mean, the buyers up here, hence the taper off of, of the profile. But that doesn't mean that if price breaks here, we eventually won't get some volume that ends up looking like this. And then the, and then the trend just continues. Let's see if it shows on the weekly. Yeah, some, yeah, somewhat. Let's zoom out a little bit more. Give it a bit. So that's giving you like a, the full week's worth of volume, it's just is It's giving you this whole chart's worth of volume. Yeah. Right? And you can see we're in an area of strength, but this strength looks to be selling. Oh. However, it, 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 could, it, it could flip, and it could flip where the, the buyers take control. It's psychological. The buyers can take control of these levels and we can potentially see higher prices. I do think we're going to see a little bit higher prices on, uh, on pound, but I mean, I let the market be the one to tell me that, but you need to look for areas of strength to trade into, not weakness. Look for areas of strength where there was clear buying. And if you're following the underlying trend, you're going to have more, you're going to have more of a shot of the trade working out, you, you put probability in your favor. And don't be scared of some damn drawdown. Like, it happens, right? No one's going to get what, I hate the term, quote unquote, sniper entries. No one's going to get, you're not going to always get those spot on pinpoint entries, right? Sometimes you will deal with drawdown. And if you let a little bit of drawdown mess with your psyche, this probably, this might not be the business for you right? It's all, it's all part of the game. And if you're looking for perfection, understand you can work yourself into a very, very high win rate. It's hard to get to, but it's freaking attainable. But if you have, and I've seen it, there's a guy in my group who uses a three pip stop with a 30% win rate and he is profitable as all outdoors. But that's because that three pip stop fits his psyche and he's drilling down into areas of what he finds is strength all the way down on the one minute chart. And it, it allows him to do that. And his trades are going, the relationship between his risk versus his, his profit is so much skewed towards profit that if he takes 10 losses in a row, it's not gonna ding anything. So I guess the point of any strategy is, is what's your strategy's relationship with risk? If you're over risking, I mean, good luck, right? <laughs> One of my one of one of my friends that trade says, "Hey, I have a line into your account anyway. So if you're gonna make stupid trading decisions, thank you for the lunch money." <laughs> <laughs> I love it, but <laughs> you you have to tweak your strategy to the idea of more more so of risk than it is profit making. And I took some heat from one of your listeners on Instagram when I and I said it's not about how much you make; it's about how much you don't lose. But that's so true. It's about how much you don't lose. And I have yet to find a profitable trader who will disagree with me because trading is essentially your best guess. And if you're not comfortable making your best guess, then I mean, why are you in the business of trading anyway? Uh, Cam, play the role of uh, your listeners and ask questions that, that they might have. 
Yeah, look, um, I mean, first of all, I think this is fantastic, guys. If you if you've ever wondered how to trade volume profile, then this has probably been the 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 information you needed to to really get a good feel for it. So, um, I mean, I, I think for me the 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 main thing around this is is really, I mean, if you had to it, maybe could could you go back and play through like um, maybe a different chart, pick a different chart. Yeah, sure. Pick pick a prior day, and I think that the the main Give thing here is we just got to I don't uh, just maybe maybe do do um, uh, Euro AUD something completely opposite a from this. That is not uh, liquid. That likes to wick. <laughs> yeah, and then I think it's it'd be quite good to sort of see yeah. if um, with the volume profile how we can how somebody would step through it and going you know ignoring the current day which. Obviously, he's going to have the full volume profile there, um, which is hard to do when you see it on the screen. Mm-hmm. But taking the prior day's volume and then going, okay, well, how do we how do we then uh, step through and go right? This is the entry for the day, and I'm out. Cool. I've done one trade on that pair, and you know, and it, and it might not ever set up. Yeah, but yeah, and I, I think from this, thing it, too, it, like you might not get a trade every day, and you got to be okay with that. But I, yeah. I, I. I I keep the bigger picture in mind because right now I see I'm moving off of lows. Uh, I don't see a trade. I can tell you right now. I don't see a low risk trade. How does that sound? Okay. Okay. Let's just, let's jump into, um, hold on. No, we'll, we'll stay here because I can, I mean, it's trading, right? It's all subjective anyway. So now that I know my highest prices of the month and my low prices, uh, now let us use volume. And I'm gonna go session based volume profiles. Excuse me. Man, it happened again. <laughs> <laughs> Looking for strength to buy into. Because again, I, I know somewhere down here were monthly lows and that's fine and dandy and all, but the market was just looking, it, it, it's moving off of areas of strength. Now, I think the trend may potentially continue. Let me look at the one hour, get a little bit more detail. So the one hour now is drawing that volume on a daily basis, whereas the four hour was doing it on a weekly. Is that right? Yes. No, okay. the four hours doing it on a weekly okay. and the hours doing it on, hold on, my brain's. I think it's a daily basis on, yeah, it's a daily okay. basis here. I think that's what I said. That's what yeah. I said. So, yeah. So, okay, like cool. right here, we're at daily highs, right? And we're in an area of a little bit of strength, some weakness here. So, so we're one hour into the current day, so we can ignore that little sort of, yeah, those, I'm not going to uh, pay much very attention small to that. Yeah. So, okay. The, so we're looking, so we're ignoring the stuff that's you've just drawn a line through. And all we've got is the information from the prior day. Right, gotcha. Right, so now, like right here, yeah. right? This this was, you got you had two options to enter here, right? Off of the lows. So now what I will look for is either an entry. I, I wouldn't, I'd be hesitant to take an entry down in here. Why? Because one, two, three hits. It's probably going to run right through it and make a new low. Let me drop down to the 30. I look right around here for a potential entry. Right. I can see this little bit of strength here where where the selling and the buying just kind of flip one another. So I would look for a pullback down into here. And again, it could come all the way down here. It could come make a brand new low. But if you ask me, I think the strength is going to be somewhere in this area, in this region here, where you can attempt to follow the trend. But then again, let's look at where we are in the in the overall very hard range isn't it okay so it's possibly heading up to the top or well, down to the bottom of the range yeah it, it, it and if it keeps just looking at the daily chart i see room for new highs if it keeps going but the fact that we've had this massive push off of this uh of this point of control that and even this massive push here and you can see that this point of control was not hit before yeah. right so that means that there is probably likely some i don't say leftover demand but uh 
some leftover orders mixed with some market orders. This is not just leftover orders. There's it's a mix of everything, right? And then now that we see that, we see that there on the daily, we see we, we stacked, stalled here, stalled here. I see a lot of room for upside if it keeps going up. So again, I would look for that pullback, maybe down into here somewhere. And again, I do think it, it could come a lot lower, could come down into this region here, because even though volume profile is not showing strength, I see strength right here, personally. So if this doesn't hold, look look for, I would look for a long down in here with the stop at the lows. And if it gets stopped out, it gets stopped out. But then I would be looking to target somewhere up here if we, if we stay bullish. But if we break out, I'd still have the same target somewhere in this region. And would you um where would you put your stop if you if your target's way up there? I mean, what what sort of risk to reward you? So it it just depends, right? On 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 where I would personally enter at. I personally would love to enter somewhere down here, because it's more of what's happening right now more so than in the yeah. past. But a lot of times these past levels will get referenced. So I personally would look more down in here. And if I were to get in down, let's say down in here, my stop would have to go beneath some some lows right so this is too much risk for me personally because if i'm wrong i know this level will break out retest go short and test the lows and i would just follow the wave i, I will need i don't force it right literally let the market tell you what it's about to do like don't force it because again my my opinion my analysis it does not move the market right <laughs> and and that's another thing that's hard for people to grasp they do their best analysis. They put on the trades, trade on the work out, like, oh my God, the market's manipulated. Oh, I'm gonna cry. No, your analysis doesn't move the market and you gotta be okay. You, you, you have to really, really be okay with that. And then that's where I think, you know, the trading psychology aspect of, of the psychology around money, not necessarily trading comes into effect because if you're so emotionally connected to money that you can't deal with a little bit of drawdown or you're so emotionally connected to money or winning that you get into an environment of the market that, that you can't control and it affects you mentally. You got to do some work on you. Right. Uh, and I think that's, that's actually a lot more important than what goes on mm -hmm. on the charts. So, um, what I find quite interesting with this setup is, uh, I mean, if you look at it and uh, the average sort of retail trader is probably going to be looking for, for shorts, yeah, Shorts, yeah, because it's it's you know it's heading down towards some lows and it makes sense. Whereas and so if if it did come through, you know, take your stop out, would you then? So you said you, you'd follow the wave. Does that mean you'd then flip to go mm -hmm. to shorts? Yeah. Okay, because there's probably a short term short target, then I could recover right. that loss. Okay, right with zero emotions, not not caring one bit, just. Follow the wave, man. You and, and you'd be um, like, like Bruce Lee says, and, and you'd be like just covering the loss versus trying to make like what you were going to make in the yeah, first trade. Yeah, it's yeah. just okay. it's, yeah, it's just all risk. Yeah. It's all risk at the end of the day. So it's not like yeah, I'm going to beat the market. Yeah, nah, I don't care for that. So yeah, nice. What are the questions? Um, oh, I'm trying to think. Uh, volume profile. So so that so just to summarize the 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 overall thing. So the high volume is where you're looking for an entry mm -hmm. and you're looking for a high volume target as your exit. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. So what you want to do is you want to find just, uh, I find that the best trades are trading against a move to follow the trend. So your listeners will have to interpret that as they, as they wish. Um, so I so like like the example in a bullish environment, I'm looking to fade a retracement to an area of where I feel okay, I can take a take a a low risk trade here. And you so same thing with volume profile, right? You want to look for just a a, a move into an area of strength for the overall trend. And that's that, that's how I would do it. Now, that doesn't mean you can't scalp against the trend because I do that too. 
And you can do that with volume profile, but you got to know if you're trading against the overall trend, you're going to get screwed because someone, the market has targets and it's not going to stop until it hits that target. So, excuse me, think in terms like that, think in terms of probability. Um, you want to trade into areas of strength to follow the trend. If you're trading against the trend, you want to understand, hey, a reversal is not really probable. It may just be a short-term move against the overall trend. So take your pips and get out, right? Trends intensify. Now, volume profile is great. Uh, if I could summarize it up, volume profile is great when you're trading inside of a range. It's not so great when you're when you're trending, but then you have other tools like uh what was it called the visible range or something like that the fixed uh, the visible range that was it yeah right yeah so you can look at something like that to give you more of an idea and you can see here strength i this is a higher time frame high volume area but we, we're stopping into into air, in areas of strength right uh that's essentially what you want to be trading into um again if I can give you some, give listeners any hints, just move all joint. Look at these, oops. Yeah, you can tell I don't use meta, uh, trading view. You can use, attempt to use these bars as, I don't wanna say support and resistance levels, but as potential entry points, right? Um, just get creative, start farting around with some stuff, right? And that's, that's the only way you find your edge is you start farting around with things and eventually something's going to click. I fart around with trend lines so much that I know I didn't want to use them ever again. I'd rather just use the brakes, yeah. right? But to start fooling with things that could be of value to you, um, think outside the box, use your head, use logic because, hey, that's... And how much, how much uh, impetus would you put on candlesticks when you're using this? I don't care. I don't care. A candle is just a representation of price moving one way or the other. I don't care. I don't care about patterns. Uh, yeah, no, I don't care. I legit don't care. And uh, limit orders or market orders or stop orders? In my personal trading, I do both. I do limits. Uh, I don't really do stop orders because let's say if you're if you, if you do a stop order above a high and a, and, and you're anticipating the market continue. Well, the market could be reaching for something that's slightly above that high, take your stop order in, and then you're kind of screwed, right? Mm. So I, I, I primarily do uh, limit orders. And I I personally, I look for points in the market where the liquidity shifts. And I put my limit orders there. Nice. Well, look, um, I, I think that we've gone on for 45 minutes here, almost, or 40-odd minutes. This has been <laughs> fantastic. I. I think I've I've eaten as much out of you as I can, and look, I I know I've probably I'm probably not doing the listeners any justice because I I have um, obviously spent a lot of time with you and, and asked you many questions over the years. Um, Andre, <laughs> I mean, I, if if people are wanting to know more, what's this? What, what should they do? Yeah, uh, just email me Andre at chartartisttrading dot com. Um, yeah, email me. Please follow the instructions on the website. If you don't follow the instructions on the website, I'm probably not going to respond to your email. And people have have found that out, that I can be kind of a, I don't know. I don't have time for people who can't follow simple directions. Because then I know if you come into my group, then, yeah, you're just going to be a nightmare. So just email me. Please follow the instructions if that's something you're interested in. And understand that even if I do, because I don't accept everybody, if I do accept you into my group, you will learn the basics of price before you learn it anything about volume and if you're not ready for that you're not ready for that and also i'll put it out there i tell people who i meet with even if you come into the group really fully expect like even on your board expect it to take six months to a year of intense study intense study for you to make uh breakthroughs and you're not going to make just one breakthrough you're going to make thousands of little breakthroughs that will lead you to an aha moment um and study yourself really really study yourself study what makes you tick study your ego um yeah because cam you know me very well i can have a bit of an ego problem 
and I've had to learn to kill it off over the years um, just by being hyper aware of when I'm acting like a pompous jerk, right? So study yourself, study your ego. Um, be aware of the Instagram traders because most of them are fake. I had to let that out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, look, I mean, when you come into my house and, and try and knock down those walls with hammers, look, you should, you I, should. I don't think you, I don't, I don't think you'll be able to get in, mate. Your head won't be able to get through the door. I think your wife should hit me with the hammer if that tried to ever happen. <laughs> She has my permission to just totally like, What's ravage wrong with these me. Americans? Yeah, you know, <laughs> just me and my analogies. You know, I I tend to go overboard. Ask my wife. <laughs> hey, um, guys, then don't send them an email saying hi. That that like honestly, that is the worst thing to do. I've seen it so many times. Don't say hi, or Mentor, hey, please. No, please don't. <laughs> well, not even that. Just a hi. It's like. Just ask the question. If you've got a question, yeah, just ask just the question. Reach out to me. Um, you can, if you can find my social media profile, you may already follow me there. If you can ask me a question there, um, I don't actively market my Instagram because I don't really care. Um, I would also tell you too, if you want some hints into um, uh, a big part of what I do, one of my students, and I'll just say it's just some trader, listen to that interview you should be able to find some nuggets in there. And if you can't, you're probably too emotional. All right, I'm done. I'm done ranting because I can keep going, Cam. I can keep going. Cool, cool. All right, guys. Well, look, thanks. Thank you for watching. Do remember to hit subscribe, uh, click on the notifications, click all, and uh, you're going to get notified when we've got more videos like this coming up on Trading Nut. Um, guys, we'll see you in the next episode.